Hey guys, this is Christy Flores from Fame, and you're watching MissHollywood.com. Hey everyone, we are introducing a new segment today here at MissHollywood.com called Hollywood Who's Who. You get to meet the people behind the voice of characters, people that you see in commercials all the time and you wonder, who's that? Or I want to know who the person is behind the voice. Well, we've got them. And today is our first Hollywood Who's Who. She is the voice behind many characters that we have grown to love on such shows like SpongeBob and Jimmy Neutron, Carolyn Lawrence. All right, SpongeBob, you win. Stay inside forever. Hi, Neutron. Hi, Vortex. Nice dog. Thanks. Nice. Um, why are you taking your mother's blender for a walk? Well, you're poor, and all good Christians should help the poor. Well, here, sir, take this charity. The Lord wants me to help you. So, Carolyn, welcome to MsHollywood.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Now you've been doing uh, Sandy for the past 10 years, right? That's a long time for any actor to be doing a part. It's an incredibly long time. It's, it's kind of, it flew by, I can't believe it's been 10 years. And every week for 10 years, I've thought, okay, I hope we work next week. <laughs> and with, Sim with Cindy on Jimmy Neutron, you were only supposed to be there for a short time, right? And then they extended your part and, it, and ended up keeping you. Right. I was supposed to, originally I was supposed to do what's called a scratch track, which is basically a template so the animators can start working um, until they find the actress that they really want. So I was like the substitute while they were auditioning for someone else to play the part. Um, and then they wound up keeping me, which was amazing. Um, but I think the reason that that went well is because I didn't think I had the job, so I didn't have any pressure, and I just had such a good time and just played around that ultimately that was a good thing. That's when I discovered you actually have to care less about a job. <laughs> so there's some advice for you people out there. <laughs> so you're not all stressed out. You've done so many characters, but does it take a long time for you to come up with a voice, or is that something that's natural to you? I was never one of those kids who played around with sounds and voices and, and stuff like that. So I wouldn't say it comes natural in that sense. Um, it comes naturally through acting because I prepare, I prepare for animation just like I would for doing a play or a feature or anything else. To me, it's the same. Sometimes do you get confused when you go in like, okay, where am I? And you have to register in your head. Okay, this is the voice I need to use. And you don't get mixed up using Cindy for, you know, SpongeBob and so forth. Yeah, it can get really confusing. If you have a lot of sessions in the same day where you're playing a lot of different people, it gets completely confusing. But that's why we have directors. We have a great director on SpongeBob, um, Andrea Romano. And she's the one who will step in and say, um, Carolyn, you're, you're, you're not Sandy anymore. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, all right, give me a second. And in animation, if it's been a long time, like if your show took a break, like if you took a summer break or something when you come back to work, usually they'll have a reference for you. They'll have a recording that you've done in the past that they can play for you to remind you of what you sounded like. As a child, I read that you wanted to be a dancer. So how did you get involved in doing voice work? I was a dancer. I worked with a ballet company in Ohio, and then I was with a jazz company in Chicago called Gus Giordano. And, um, and I was so fortunate to even make a living in, in that field that it never crossed my mind that I would be able to move into an, another challenging field and make a living. But um, when I was dancing in Chicago, a gentleman asked me to audition for a line of stuffed animals. And I did that audition for him and I got the job and that's when I started doing voiceover. I had no idea that um, people did that for a living. The difference is a lot of times between doing on-camera work, which you have done, and doing the voiceover work for children's shows is the fact that these characters really do live on forever and get passed down from generation to generation. Yeah, it's wild to think about. I think about that sometimes, that I could be 80, 90 years old and Sandy and Cindy or whoever, they'll still be living somewhere. They'll probably still be airing like Bugs Bunny airs now. Um, now for our viewers out there, can you do a little example for us of your voices, of any of your characters? Can you do a little snippet? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's always a weird thing. It's a weird thing when you know somebody's going to see you doing it because I, I can't explain that. It's kind of embarrassing in an odd way. But yes, here I go. All right. <laughs> 
So uh, this is Sandy, and uh, what makes her work for me is her teeth, because she's a squirrel. She's a squirrel. I'm the smartest one in school. We all know that. See, now I'm embarrassed. Yeah, it's different when you're in a booth by yourself, right? <laughs> it's totally different. It's funny, when I first started doing animation voiceover, and it was still kind of awkward to sit in a booth and have a bunch of people just stare at you while you're doing it, and... Uh, the first time I had to do an action scene, you know, where you're like running and jumping and I was so self-conscious because you're just standing at a mic going <laughs> and it seems kind of ridiculous. What's also interesting about, and, I, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but with movies like with Pixar or whatever, I'm, I'm hearing about these people where they, they tape their parts in different parts of the world that they're never together in one space. When you're doing these the cartoon voices, are you guys all together in a group, the whole cast, or is it done separately? I'm ridiculously fortunate because on SpongeBob, Jimmy Neutron, and Moral Oral, we all record together. We record it like we're doing a play. We sit in the booth all as a group, and um, it's my favorite part of the whole thing because you get to play off one another. And then if somebody comes up with a joke, then you can respond, and, and it just is a whole different feeling than recording by yourself. Are you able to improvise a little bit at all, or do you have to stick straight to the script all the time? No, they let us play. A lot of times they'll let us play um, and improvise, but we have to make sure to do it as written as well. <laughs> we, can't, we can't get too far off script. Um, or the director goes, um, guys, please, back to the way it was written. What else are you working on right now? I'm actually trying to co-produce my first project. I'm co-producing an animated feature. It's called Monstroville. And we do have a blog online if anybody wants to check it out. And uh, we're in the very early stages of storyboarding and trying to get our financing. But that's really exciting for me. Something totally new. And are you still working on Spongebob and all of that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we just we just did a new um, video game last week for SpongeBob. The merchandise keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, yeah. Well, it seems like every time um, every time I feel like there's going to be a lull in in production or in its popularity, it kicks in again, either with a new generation of kids or with a whole new country. Like China last year started airing it, um, and that's wild. It's wild to watch it travel around the world. And it's fun to see that it translate that the comedy and the show translates into other languages well and that people enjoy it. It's really neat. Cartoons can be a definite gold mine with these kids. <laughs> yes. Well, because kids want to watch something like four hundred times. <laughs> that is though, that's the beauty of kids. It's new every time. It's new and hilarious every time. Thank you so much, Carolyn, for joining us at MissHollywood.com. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for all your help this morning. Some technical difficulties. Thank you for joining us at MissHollywood.com. See you next time.